As you know, for the last two and a half years, we've been working to modify downtown Birmingham by replacing the 5920 Bridge Central Business District project. We have completed two phases already, uh, primarily the widening of the bridges at 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Avenue, and the rebuilding or the modification to the ramp at 5920 and I-65. We're now in phase three. Phase three is the actual demolition and the rebuilding of the bridges through downtown, the central business district, the elevated section through downtown, and the modification of the ramps at Red Mountain Expressway and the ramps at uh, 31st Street. The magic question has been asked, when will the bridges go down? And that's the purpose of this news conference today, is to talk about when the bridges will go down. Construction crews have been working very diligently to get to a transition, because there will be a transition period to get, to get into the actual closure. That transition period will start January the 18th, the night of January the 18th, uh, when we will actually close the ramp from 50 Red Mountain Expressway North to 59 South. All this is weather dependent, and one of the major items of work that we need to get done before we can actually do the closure of any kind, including the ramp from Red Mountain Expressway, is the opening of the 31st Street on-ramp going toward the airport. This ramp is crucial to motorists being able to maneuver around the closure. So we have it contractually obligation on the contractor to have that open before we close the mainline bridges. Another question has been asked is will the 25th Street on and off ramp to be open at the time of the closure? Unfortunately, those ramps will not be open immediately. Uh, there's about a two week period of time when they will not be open. Due to the weather that we've had since November, just constant rain and some construction, construction items that we have to accomplish, these ramps will not be open until February the 4th. What I would like to do is take you through a transition period that we'll be working through for the next two weeks. There's a two week transition period, as I mentioned, but that two week transition period includes three weekends. And so I'll walk you through those three weekends and that's from January the 18th to February the 4th. As mentioned earlier, on January the 18th, the night of January the 18th, that Friday, Friday night this week, we anticipate closing the Red Mountain Expressway ramp from northbound to southbound 59, like going to Tuscaloosa, that flyover ramp. That ramp will close permanently. It will not reopen until we can construct the new bridges and a new ramp and open that to travel. Also, that first weekend, the ramp from I-59 southbound, if you're coming from the airport, and you're traveling to Red Mountain Expressway South, will not be available either due to some uh, construction activity that will be going on in that area underneath the bridge. However, during that first weekend, the main line bridge is 5920 will still be open. Thereby, motorists have access into the city at 22nd Street and out of the city at 25th Street. The main line will still be open the first weekend when Red Mountain Expressway uh, south to, excuse me, 5920 south to Red Mountain Expressway south ramp will be closed. The second weekend, which is January the 25th through the 28th, from that Friday night at 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. on Monday the 28th, Caraway Boulevard will not be available for motors to use in the area right under 
the existing I-59 bridges. The contractor will be demoing those bridges uh, over Caraway that weekend. But it's only for that weekend that that will not be available. We will have detours that will be available to maneuver around that closure. And then the third weekend, which is February the 3rd through the 4th, Callaway Boulevard will not be available primarily just that Sunday, February the 3rd. Uh, we're listening, we're, we're, we're listening, we're making it, we're saying the whole weekend, but primarily it'll be just February the 3rd. And the good thing is that come February the 4th, we anticipate the new ramps, 5920 off and on ramps to 25th Street will be available the morning by, by the morning of February the 4th. This completes the transition period. And after this two week trans transition period and the three weeks that, three weekends that I spoke about, all the ramps, all the detours that we've mentioned on our website will be available for motorists to use and it will be functioning in its capacity. Please keep in mind that all construction plans can, can change due to weather and other factors. However, weather permitting, we anticipate that the closure of the mainline bridges will take place early the week of the 21st, January 21st. We encourage motorists to use the detours, primarily to use I-459. We've spent a lot of time the last year resurfacing and improving I-459, and we think that that is the best way for motors to efficiently avoid the construction delays and bypass the closure. The local traffic, there will be signed detours and increased presence of uh, law enforcement. We will also have our ASAP drivers, which is our drivers in our trucks that go around and help motors, and we will have record services available in order to uh, ensure traffic flows as smoothly as possible during this period of time. What I would like to do now is identify where the closure points are in their three directions, traveling westbound on 5920, eastbound on 5920, and northbound on Red Mountain Expressway. If you're looking at this map, you're looking uh, eastbound on uh, 5920, and this map shows you the different directions that motors will have to exit the 5920 in order to uh, avoid uh, the detour. You'll either have to exit on I-65 northbound, and keep in mind I-65 northbound is also the sign detour for 5920. Uh, you either have to exit on 17th Street exit, or you can exit on 65 southbound, or you can exit to uh, 6th Avenue North. Mr. Henry, I have a yeah. to yes. All right. Given this scenario, what is the advice for folks traveling who need to go eastbound to get back on 5920? What is your advice to them? Is the best way to go. Follow the D Yes, okay. Okay, the D chair will be go 65 northbound to Finley Boulevard, back to Caraway, and you can get back on the interstate at the uh, new ramps when, when they're open, or you can access through Fifth Avenue on the ramp. Okay, so, so to get back on, would that be 31st Street and 25th Street are the two ways to get back on? Or you tell me, what's the best way? The best way is when the, when the 25th Street ramp is open, you to use the 25th Street on ramp. Before the 25th Street on ramp is open, your best route was to take uh, Caraway down to 5th Avenue and exit and get back on. 5th Avenue on ramp to go 59 north. I know a lot of motors are gonna probably use 12th Street and 31st Street to get on. Uh, but we, the sign detour will actually be to stay on Caraway 
to Fifth Avenue, turn left at Fifth Avenue, and then get on the on ramp at Red Mountain Expressway, which will carry you to 59 North. We basically get on uh, the Red Mountain Expressway to get you. That's correct. Okay, so that's Make your way to the Red Mountain Expressway to get on that Red Mountain Expressway. That's right. Now, okay, if you're traveling westbound, you can either exit at Red Mountain Expressway, or you exit at Caraway, or you can exit 25th Street when it's open after the first two weeks, or you can exit 31st Street and be able to maneuver back uh, to 5920 to the detour. Our main detour is Caraway, Finley, Boulevard in order to maneuver around the country. Okay. Now, and is that up to you? Be, you want to go all the way to Arkansas, or do you want to make your way to 11th Street, uh, 11th Avenue, excuse me? No, not the 11th Avenue. The, the, the detour carries you north on Caraway, uh -huh. and you turn left, you go west on Finley Boulevard, and then you can either get back on 65 or go all the way to Arkansas. I'm encouraging motors to go out with Arkadelphia because uh, the left turn movement to get back on 65 is that, that left turn lane short and Philly Boulevard is a six lane facility. And so it's underused today as a given opportunity to get motors through downtown and back to 59. You, this might be a city of Birmingham question. Do you envision officers being working heavily in Philly Boulevard to move traffic through them? During the closure, we will have motors, we'll have uh, officers available through the project, off duty, policemen, troopers, and on duty uh, policemen and troops to help us with uh, maneuvering, especially until we everything settles down. Okay, if you travel northbound on Red Mountain Expressway, you'll have to exit either at uh, First Avenue, Second Avenue, or you can go 59, 20 north, or you have to exit down to Carolina. And we encourage you to follow us on our website or through our social media. And we're also using a hotline. This hotline is available and has been available for a period of time, for a long period of time. We've been taking questions and we've been by answering those questions offline. But for the first week, especially for the first week starting Friday night, January the 18th, we will stand up a call center. And this is where we are today, in the call center. We will have LDOT employees who are trained to answer these questions to give motors direction, information, to help them to maneuver through this. We will man this for 24 seven for a period of time until the detours and everything settles down to make sure we accommodate motors uh, for this shut. This is a view of what we, of the future. This shows looking east toward the airport with the new interchange at Red Mountain Expressway the new interchange at 31st Street, and how the new ramps will function once we're complete. Just as we finished the interchange at I-65 and 5920, we want to see this coming, we see this coming into uh, fruition very soon also. But this is the future of where we go. We also have with us today uh, Mr. James Fowler, he's the director of transportation with the city of Birmingham. We have been working with the city. ALDOT has provided the city uh, new timings through a modeling uh, effort that we've done through some consultants so that we can retime the signals. And James has worked very closely with us, and we appreciate the cooperation the city has given us in this effort. And we're going to let James come and say a few words as to how they're going to uh, function and make those changes. Thanks. Uh, my name is James Fowler, and I'm the director of the Birmingham Department of Transportation. And uh, as Jarvis mentioned, 
Over the last several months, and specifically over the last several weeks, our department uh, has been working closely with them. Our signals division has been working closely with uh, ALDOT and also their consultant, Sane & Associates, to develop signal timing plans for approximately 150 signals on the north side of downtown, so in the proximity of the expected closure. And uh, this week, we'll actually start implementing some of those plans. Uh, today, we will actually start implementing some of the more minor adjustments, and then later in the week, along some of the more major detour routes, we'll start implementing some of the more significant changes to the signal timing system. Also, our signs and markings division has been working closely with ALDOT and their consultants as well, going out and making adjustments uh, to some of the different interchanges and surface streets and intersections, uh, in some cases just doing minor touch-ups to the striping and paint, uh, in other cases actually making some laneage adjustments, uh, such as at 16th Avenue North around I-65, and then also at 31st Street and uh, 12th Avenue North, making actual laneage adjustments. Um, so we're expecting uh, some significant impacts, especially during the first uh, couple weeks of the closure. Our staff, our signals division, and also our signs and markings division will be on call and available 24-7 uh, during those times to go out and address problems if they occur. Um, additionally, all of our departments within the city are on notice um, and are on call to make adjustments and respond to problems if they occur, especially over the first few weeks of the closure. So thank you. Thanks, right, James. Thank you, James. We want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for coming, and we want to ask motorists to be patient during this process as we go through the closure of the 5920 Bridge elevated section through downtown. And we hope everyone will realize what the future is because the level of service, which is the decrease in congestion through downtown, will be greatly improved once we finish this project. We ask motorists to remember to take the alternate routes, look at the alternate routes, identify a plan, and start identifying where your uh, routes will be, and so you'll be ready to move forward uh, when the closure takes place. We encourage you to go to our website, 5920bridge.com, and we will be sending out traffic alerts along the way to make sure motors of know what's going to take place. One of the traffic alerts that we're going to send out is every day we're going to contact the media because underneath the bridge during the demolition and the erection of the new bridge, the north and south routes that's, that's available underneath the bridge will change quite frequently. So we will inform the uh, media so they can inform the motors which routes or which streets they can use to maneuver through the construction zone daily. Our public information officer, Ms. Linda Crocker, will be contacting you daily uh, to give you that information. Again, thank you for coming, and we encourage uh, motors to continue to be patient with us as we uh, move to progress and better the infrastructure in downtown Birmingham. With that, we'll take questions. Jarvis, one of the things, people are married to their phones, right? You know, you use them for navigation. You mentioned some of the changes that are coming with over the weeks between the beginning of January and February. Is that going to be updated real time? In other words, if I plug that in my phone, is it going to alert me to some of the changes that you've been mentioning? Behind those doors uh, is our traffic monitoring center. And our traffic monitoring center has a way to connect with uh, those GPS uh, providers. And we're working very diligently to make sure that takes place on a timely manner. Uh, you, you mentioned a repaving project on 459, especially going southbound where it's down to one lane in some sections. Are you thinking about opening that up at all to help with the flow of traffic as people avoid downtown? Uh, I think the only place that's been down to one lane recently is over in the Liberty Park area. I think we finished that project or very close to being finished. You will not see any uh, lane closures during the day, um, double lane closures during the day going forward. And we anticipate that project to be finished. And if it's not finished, we'll stop that operation once we close the bridge. Your biggest fear as you go. 
Well, I think one of my biggest fears is Motors is going to try to use the detours instead of utilizing the downtown detours, the local detours, versus using 459. Especially during the daytime hours or off-peak hours. We really feel that the best maneuver for motors is to use 459 to go around the closure. Uh, and so if everyone tries to use the detours through downtown, that's my biggest fear, that it will really cause some major congestion. In 25th Street, what's the timetable again for that? It should be open to traffic. The on and off ramps at 25th Street should be open by February the 4th. The second week, the third weekend, third. two week, two week period, three weekends. Um, you mentioned that you know one of your biggest concerns would be using downtown uh, as an alternate route. Do you guys have any plans in place if people start using University with all that congestion? Uh, university currently is not a state route. Uh, we made a swap with the city of Birmingham several years ago. And we took over Finley Boulevard. And the city of Birmingham now has the jurisdiction of uh, University Drive. But that's why we made those improvements on Finley Boulevard after we took possession of that. And those improvements have will greatly help motors maneuver through during the closure. Anyone else? After this transition period and the closure of the main lines, do you foresee any scenario over the course of the year or so that it'll take to construct the, these bridge, new bridges where the main corridors or the main detour routes would have to change? Currently, we don't see any scenario that may, during the construction, things happen and we may have to close some, some routes. If, it, if they do close route, primarily they'll close them at night. If you notice in most of the construction that took place even at the interchange is 65. They did a lot of work at night, and we purposely wrote our contract to encourage the contractor to work at night to, in off-peak hours. And they're primarily, work, primarily working between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. when they have to have those closures. Can you go, uh, might be one of the more clarifications. This is a 14-month deal. I think the clock starts ticking Monday. It was, if we close, the, when the clo main line is closed, that's when the clock starts ticking. And it's 14 months. Explain basically what you know being finished, open for traffic, where this could drag out until November of 2020. The contractor has 425 days to demo the elevated section through downtown and reopen that portion to traffic. That is just one part of the overall project. There are other items of work that will have to be accomplished once the main line bridge is open to traffic. And that's the time period from uh, to November of 2020. But 14 months is all the contractor has to have it demoed and open back up to traffic. But the but the project actual completion date of the project is not to November 2020. There's other items of work, as I mentioned, that will have to take place uh, outside of the actual opening of the mainline bridges. Not for the main line. The main line should be open by 14 months. In fact, the contractor wants to beat that 14 months for every day that he can shave off of that 14 uh, months, he gets $250,000 incentive. For every day he goes over 14 months, he has to pay us, a pay all dot, $250,000. So he has an incentive to make this happen. And uh, that's why he's He's working very diligently and ready to move forward. Uh, but there are some other items like some uh, minor work underneath the bridges and some other items that has to be done to do the final cleanup once all the bridges are complete and open to traffic. Are there weather bills? 